Good evening. My name is Cassie Ney, and I'll be talking about teaching. As a child, I dreamed of being a teacher, and I planned outfits. I closely observed my own teachers and kept mental notes. I practiced being a teacher for hours in my family's basement. Under the guise of listening to records, I was really holding class for imaginary students, about 16 of them. I took attendance, graded papers, and I scolded the girls who had made fun of my neighbor's snow boots on the playground. My imaginary students went on a field trip every day. <laughs> That's how my barn chores fit into the scenario. I would instruct these kids on how to feed a calf, how to fill a grain chute, and how to safely close a jackknife after cutting baler twine. At the time, I didn't know that my active daydreaming was manifesting my actual future. The work ethic of farm life transferred seamlessly to my teaching life, and it was understood that from August to June, the work would never be done. For the next 35 years, minus a study sabbatical and two maternity leaves, I taught mostly 12th grade English to all levels of students. I introduced thousands of students to hundreds of characters. Beowulf, Simon and Piggy, Siddhartha, Gregor Samsa, the Macbeths, Hedda Gobbler, Dorian Gray, and Wellington. We had a catchphrase in the English department, everybody dies. <laughs> In the 80s, we had a quick fix to lift our students' spirits. Fresh off the mimeograph machine, chemically fragrant quizzes. I consider myself blessed that I got to teach for about 19 years before I had to ask a student to put away a cell phone. Now this is the point that I should talk about teaching as a craft, but I battle with imposter syndrome. I found an article on craftcouncil.org that interviewed 65 makers, scholars, and collectors. 65 people defined what craft is and who does it. Only one mentioned teaching, Judith Weir, British composer. She praised Bach for managing to produce wonderful art in spite of working in the humble context of teaching. Yes, teachers dwell in humble contexts. They often use the same restrooms as students. I've wiped poop off toilets because it was there and custodians clean up enough messes. I'll forge ahead with the hope that you, the audience, recognize teachers in the company of crafters an encouraging friend suggested that I think of teachers as the crafters of crafters. I like that. Here are six things that I've gleaned from spending a great deal of my life in a classroom. Number one, those teacher-oriented sayings that show up on coffee mugs and posters are pretty much true, especially this one. Number two, students want to be seen. Kindergartners or high school seniors, it makes no difference. They want and need a teacher to see them, to know them by name, and to give them authentic feedback. Number three, kids like to fly kites. When I discovered that I had many students who had never flown a kite before, I dreamed up the holiday March 4th, celebrated on March 4th. We wrote affirmations to put on kites, and then we flew them. Number four, the average teenager is a terrible listener. They have a lot of internal noise, 
and earbuds that keep getting conspicuously smaller. But bring on the sound bowls and chimes, the breath work and brain science, the lessons in listening, and behold the result. With my public speaking students, I referred to our class as public listening. Teenagers have important things to say. They are incredibly brave truth tellers when they have trustworthy listeners. When we mindfully listen to someone tell their story, we experience neural coupling through an oxytocin boost that helps us identify with the speaker. When our brain anticipates the happy ending, we get a dopamine surge. And number six, when a teacher leaves her cell phone unattended, student selfies show up on the photo roll. Despite the impish joy on this student's face, I do want to acknowledge the mental health crisis taking its toll on our youth. Through most of my teaching career, I felt like this baboon named Helen giving baboon lessons to a mad cat. <laughs> and even though the cats were ready to spring from my clutches when the bell rang, I hope they know and knew that I cared about their well-being. Here's the last photo for your dopamine surge. Back when schools had snow days, this scene made a teacher's heart sing. Your assignment is to go home and look up the neurobiology of storytelling. Thank you for being great public listeners. <laughs>